Howdy folks, Andrew here, and today I would like to teach you a very simple way to find the t-intercepts, or aka x-intercepts, of a particular function. All right, so the function we have here is going to be c of t is equal to 4t multiplied by t minus 2 squared multiplied by t plus 1 squared, and I understand if your brain just went totally to mush at the moment as I'm stating all that mathematics, but um, let's make it nice and simple from here on out, shall we? So let's take a look. Now, uh, what does it mean to be like a t-interceptor? What does that even mean? Well, pretend you have a graph, and I don't suppose that this graph that I'm going to draw resembles this function at all, okay? But what I want to show you is this, is that um, generally speaking, the x, or in this case, the t, whatever value is on the right-hand side generally, even though that's not a law, okay, but whatever uh, value is inside of this parenthesis, that, that could be the law, um, is generally plotted on the horizontal axis. And then this value overall, c of t, which is also known as the y value sometimes, all right? That could be plotted on the vertical axis. Um, so what does it mean to be a t-intercept? Well, it's locations on the graph uh, or of the function where the uh, function crosses or intersects the t-axis. Now, it turns out that you know something special about both of these points, okay? It turns out that you know something about these points in this particular picture. What do you know about them? Well, you don't know the t value, right? Or the x value, you don't know what it is, but you do know something. You do know the y value, or aka the functions value, right? If it, all the points along this horizontal line have a y value, or in this problem, the c of t value of zero. Zero, okay? Now that will always, that should always guide your thinking about any type of problem like this, okay? Anytime they're asking you for t or x-intercepts, you're thinking, oh, the function's value or the y value has to equal zero, okay? That's got to be your guiding principle. So now what you're going to do is take this thing and just plug in zero for your function's value. So zero will equal 4t multiplied now by t minus 2 squared times t plus 1. Let me make that t a little more distinct. Sorry, t plus 1. All right. I'll move this over a little bit. So, how do we, where do we go from here, right? Now, j just before you like, oh, I don't know the, I don't, algebra, where, where do we, what do we do? Just think, just think, okay? Just slow down and think. In order for this right-hand side to go to zero, three cases can cause that to happen. Three things. If this term right here is zero, do you care what's inside of this parenthesis or what's inside of this parenthesis? No, you don't. Why? Because zero times this stuff, which is also then multiplied by this stuff, it would all be zero, right? Zero times anything is going to be equal to zero. Cool, right? Now, wait a minute. You might say, or does, did I only have to look at that term? But what about this? What about this term inside of here? Inside of that parenthesis? What happens if this term is zero? Well, zero squared is going to be zero, and zero times all the other mumbo jumbo that's on the right and left hand side of that is going to be zero. So guess what? If this term could just somehow be zero, then I know this whole right hand side is going to be equal to zero. And that's what I want. The function's value will have a value of zero, okay? Or if this term over here could somehow become zero, then I know that whenever that's multiplied by the rest of the mumbo jumbo on the right hand side is going to become zero. And that would make this statement true that it's equal to zero. Now, hopefully that makes sense, right? Now, armed with that knowledge, okay, think about what you're asking yourself now or think about what you're proposing. You're saying if only this term could somehow equal zero, just tell me for one second, just tell me, what does t have to be here in order for this term to be zero? In order for four times t to be zero, what does t have to be? t has to be zero, right? Okay. How about inside of here? What does t have to be inside of this parenthesis in order for that term to be equal to zero? Well, you might say, oh my, yeah, of course, that's right, a two, right? Yes, two, say it with confidence. How about this one? What does t have to be inside of this term for that thing to go to zero? See how, you're, you got it, minus one. Guess what you did? You solved the problem. These are all the t values now. These are all the points of intersection, all right, of that function. They might say, wow, that's really it? Is that is that all it is? Yes, that's all it is. That's all it is, okay? 
they might be saying, all right, but all right, I kind of get it. Yeah, cool. Um, but my teacher's not going to like that. Uh, you know, he wants to see, he or she wants to see some kind of more work, right? More work. All right, so let's look at it procedurally now. What would you do? Well, think about what you just proposed to yourself. You said somehow this term, this term over here has to be equal to zero. So what would you write down? You'd write 4t is equal to zero, right? Somehow that term has to equal zero, okay? What would you write in here? You also would write that t minus 2 somehow has to be equal to zero. And then what would you write for the last one? You'd write, okay, my third case would be t plus 1. How Somehow that has to be equal to zero. Great, solve everything now. Do the algebra, do the procedure. Zero minus 4, zero, excuse me, divided by 4 is just going to be zero. Add 2 on both sides now. t is going to be equal to a positive 2. And then minus 1 on both sides, and t is equal to a minus 1. I don't know what I'm writing. Minus 1. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen, that's what you told me already, right? That's what you told me already. I don't know if you told me, but that's what you thought. Now I'm a mind reader. But that's what you were thinking, I'm certain of it, okay? Right, so those are the values now, okay? These are the T values that make this function go to zero. Now, why don't we take a look at the picture, okay? Use your calculator now to help you out. Visualize it, ready? Plug in the function. Now, instead of T, I got to use X's here, so 4X. Okay, open parenthesis, x minus 2, close the parenthesis, and square it. Okay, and then open the parenthesis and do x plus 1. x plus 1. Okay, close parenthesis. Cool? Now hit graph. This is what should come out of your graph. Okay, so here, take a look. Ready? Let's expand on this now. Okay, all right. Every tick mark represents one unit. So if you notice right here, it looks like at the origin. Now, you might not be convinced, but trust me, it is. Look, at the origin, the graph crosses this t-axis. Remember, the t-axis is the horizontal axis. So look, the t-value would be zero there, wouldn't it? It's at the origin. Yeah, that's what you said it should be. Right, how about over here now? What's the t-value what's the of this coordinate right here when it crosses that axis? Well, count back one, so it's negative one. That's what you said it should be. And then how about over here where, where it intersects that point where it touches the t-axis? Look, 2. 2. That's what you said it should be. That's the algebra. This is now the picture of what it looks like. Right? So you can do the graph or now just hit second table and get the values here. Watch. Remember, we defined that the x or the t-intercepts will be the locations on the graph where the y-value or the C of T value in this problem is equal to zero. So every now corresponding X value, negative one, zero, and two, would represent the X or the T values where the function crosses that T axis. And there they all are, ladies and gentlemen. You see how nice and simple that is, right? All I gotta do sometimes, I'm gonna delete this so you can see the work again, but what I gotta do sometimes is just think a little bit about it. And I promise it'll make sense, all right? And that's what we try to do. We don't want you to teach you what to think. We want to teach you how to think about it, okay? How to think. They might say, well, how did you know? How did you know, Andrew, how to, how to break it up in that way, right? How did you know I didn't have to do anything with the square or whatnot? Well, part of it is pattern recognition and by doing a ton of practice problems. I mean, you're not, I, I, when I first started this, I wasn't just like, oh yeah, somebody gave this to me. I'm like, oh, this is so simple, right? But when it's explained in a way where you start looking at these things in a certain in a certain way, in other words, you start framing the problems in a certain way, it becomes so, so, so simple. Now, the only way that's going to happen, by the way, is with practice. It's not going to happen by just watching. Okay? What you want to do, it's a two, it, you got to do two things. You have to learn and you have to see how things are done. Okay? And hopefully that particular teacher that you're learning from um, is good and efficient. Okay? Second thing is, you got to implement it in practice. You got to do it. You got to do it. Okay? If you really want to become good at anything, you got to sit there and practice, right? Did Michael Jordan all of a sudden one day, he said, you know what? I'm going to play basketball. I'm just going to go out there and, yep, everybody's going to know my name. No. He had to spend years and years and years and years and years practicing. Any, anybody. I don't take an athlete, take any type of, it doesn't even matter. It doesn't have to be athletes. It could be anybody who has reached the pinnacle of their particular field of expertise. They spent a ton of time practicing. If you want to become good at something, that's what you got to do. Okay? Just do it. Thanks for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Hopefully that wasn't too harsh.
but I want to motivate you. So listen, in spirit of that, check out our channel because we have literally thousands of solved examples for you to do. We got a whole lot of other stuff coming. Please stay tuned, okay? We have a lot, a lot of stuff coming out, um, not only on YouTube, but elsewhere too. Stay tuned. I don't want to say too much, but uh, it's really going to be quite, it's really going to be quite a, quite amazing actually. So um, yeah, I'd love to help you out with more. Check out our channel, all right? And if you can, maybe recommend us to some of your friends, all right? We got a whole lot of other subjects out there, physics, chemistry, mathematics, also, well, obviously, I mean, we're doing math now, but you get the gist, all right? Stay tuned. I'll see you soon. Take care.